Hello! Another free in one uh, project. Not because it was designed like so, but uh, you know, good stuff actually comes together in time when you're actually using it. So we'll be having uh, three sections, or you know, like the conceptual parts. Uh, first one is about uh, just the shelves, so uh, ignore you know, the plastic stuff if you're thinking about the shelves. Then it will be about specifically the plastic part, which is a dust cover system, dust box, I would call it. And the uh, last thing, which you've seen in the thumbnail, will be about the boxes holders for the wristwatches. So, yeah, let's uh, start first with uh, just uh, the shelves. So, basically, I call them all metal shelves, because guess what? They're all made out of metal and only metal. And this particular set of two identical ones, uh, I treated as a single project, and is the fourth iteration of this idea. So I already have three other shelves uh, done with this, like from the same materials, with the same design idea. Though these ones, these two are the smallest, so I call them uh, mini alu shelves, because they're mostly made out of aluminium, but, uh, you know, mini metal shelves. So, yeah, as for these ones, uh, dimensions, because again, scale is a thing. Let me grab my trusty quarter dollar, like the best thing for scale ever. Better than a banana, for sure. So, oh, apologies. Uh, the width is about 40 centimeters, the depth is about 10 centimeters. And if you want to think about uh, height, well, these are 10 centimeters, you know, like tall, so basically you could call it like that. Now, in terms of materials, so the shelvings, and again, both of these are the same. This is aluminium or aluminum or like whatever you want to pronounce it. Uh, I don't know exactly which flavor, because this is a great thing about, you know, modern times, uh, even in places like Poland, having uh, uh, sellers available. So I found a company, I believe they make gaskets which is selling uh, offcuts, like sheets of aluminum, uh, for really cheap. I mean, it's like uh, less than 10 bucks per sheet, and they are quite large, so they are like a 1000 millimeters by 200 millimeters, and they are 2 millimeters thick. So like a meter by 20 centimeters by, by 2 millimeter thickness. And yeah, I mean, you know, like being offcuts, they obviously don't come with any protective uh, film or foil or anything like that. And they do tend to have scratches, but nothing terribly awful. So not sure if you will be able to see it, at least in this shot. But basically what I do, I just sand them down after I've cut them. So they actually look really nice. I call it the sort of a sanded slash brushed aluminum. And yeah, I mean, painting them after, you know, like when they're like that, I think that would be atrocious. So everything is metal. Now for the brackets the holding solution uh, these are from like obviously from steel or maybe not obviously but they're steel and yeah you can see i have magnet tip on this pokey thing and yeah they come in different sizes these are 10 by 10 i have them from i think like uh, two and a half centimeters up to like 15 by 15 so this is again a really great setup and design idea because like if you like want larger shelves, you just use larger brackets. You want smaller ones, you use, use smaller ones. And the general idea is the same. And I believe that they are sold as uh, timber work, like timber construction housing. So like if you build kind of like from my perspective, sort of like North American house, which is you know like empty walls inside, you would use like timber and uh, those brackets to, con to like to connect them. So again a cheap mass-produced thing, which is again nice. And uh, yeah, and the hardware I'm using just for the shelf, because you know, like you can obviously mount it, it not only in concrete walls, but you know, wherever. So I'm not really counting this fastener, e magnetism. Uh, so just about the hardware for the shelf itself, it's an obvious overkill, stainless steel, M6 bolt and uh, cup nut, I think it's called, which Unfortunately, you won't be able to see, but it's basically a nut with a hat, <laughs> if I may call it like that. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, the question, however many 
because you got holes in those brackets, obviously, the bigger the bracket, the more holes. Uh, I really like the fact that, you know, you really don't need to use all of them. I think the first one I've built, I've used everything, so it's like total overkill. But, you know, the whole idea of metal shelves, very flexible, easy to make, you know, as long as you can cut aluminum, which I can. Cutting steel, well, I also can do that, but not with this amount of precision. And uh, yeah, the, you know, like the, the biggest benefit is that the shelf itself is extra thin at two millimeters. So yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're trading some strength. It's not uh, like an, like a proper plywood or anything like that. But again, you won't be getting anything wood like having this amount of strength at two millimeters. And if you were to use steel plates, this stuff would be extremely heavy. So yeah, well, I wouldn't be putting, you know, like lead ink knots on it or anything like that. I mean, I have the, technically six shelves made in exactly the same way and they can hold stuff and not just, you know, like paper decoration or anything like that. So yeah, I think on that side, it's pretty cool. And again, both are the same. And yeah, I think the next thing to talk about uh, will be the dust box idea which you can see but let me change the angle okay before we get back um, to the scheduled programming one digression because uh, you know usually when i do filming the angles are weird and suboptimal and usually the answer is i have little space and now the answer is not only i have little space this whole thing is inside a rack so you can see the top shelf and the stuff on the bottom, you know, it's all in an enclosed space. So just getting, well, basically jamming the camera to get anything was already, you know, extra fun. But yeah, let's talk about the dust box. And, uh, well, you know, if you put wristwatches or anything that you would not like to have dust uh, on it, you are going to need uh, some protection and uh, oddly enough it doesn't have to be you know, like airtight it's not about that it's about like the usual currents because i mean you don't see them but if you get a um, powerful enough flashlight and does and just you know like like the one when you can see the beam <laughs> you will see you can actually judge how much dust there is and again in this place there's a lot of it so yeah and it was a fun project um, again mostly done out of trash um, garbage so like the off cuts and whatever stuff i had lying around uh, as far as i can see there are only like three elements uh, which are let's say brand new so the idea is that you have two i would call them solid sides so this side on the left and same side on the right side and these are acrylic and PVC like plastic brackets. So the plastic brackets were new uh, for this. And also if you can see it like probably barely at this angle, there's also some like a ceiling tape. Uh, I featured that uh, in some other video, probably for the uh, thermometer holder thingy. Um, or just like in general with pro project or project Sklarnia. In any case, uh, both, uh, let's say, walls on the left and the right, um, one is mounted to the bottom shelf and the other one is mounted to the top shelf. Only because I had this idea that, you know, even though these two shelves are identical, I will not be putting them, you know, like aligned because, you know, this whole idea with the dust box and watch boxes, that's a light letter, letter thing, like l much later. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was like the easiest way, you know, without having to like touch both of the shelves. Because again, I like modularity and uh, I want to be able to, you know, like just return it into two separate shelves. So the only modification was in the top shelf, two additional holes. So it's like no biggie. If you take it out, you don't even see that. Like you wouldn't know that it was here. And yeah, I mean, the PVC brackets. So you mount them using the already existing screw because you know like the screw here is exactly the same like that like like as this one and you know like it's like reversed on the other side 
So yeah, with the sides covered, what we need is the front side. And again, this is not the thing that you're supposed to be using like six times a day every day. It's a place for your watches to live. So I change my watches mostly like with the seasons or even less than that. So, you know, still something that's easy to access. But uh, yeah, so PVC uh, foil. I think this is the thick one again from the Project Szklarnia stuff, from so the greenhouse project. Um, relatively thick and as you can see, obviously garbage, off cuts, you know, with markings that make no sense. But I had it lying around. And yeah, the top side, another like this, the same bracket, PVC bracket thing, like a profile. Um, yeah, so this was like, this stuff was new. And on the top side, the new stuff, pop rivets. Pop rivets are awesome, really. I mean, you should get into them. So yeah, it's held this by pop rivets. And then um, the first thing I've done, I've actually made like this leap uh, on like just to like have some material down here. And again, with pop rivets, this time as the PVC uh, foil is obviously soft, uh, you actually do need small washers, or, like some piece of like hard material. Because I've like for like the first iteration, like the first attempt, I didn't use the washers. And you know, the rivets kind of hold in there until they don't and then they fall out. So yeah, just in like a pro tip here, uh, use some additional material. And then the last but not least, the steel rod. Uh, this is the same stuff I've used for the like uh, towed tray carrier for the model paint cans. So this is another new material. I think it was my like second use of it. it was here, you know, just to again, like to add some weight and some rigidity. So, you know, you can like, yeah, you know, it's like, it's a flap. It's like a, like a door and like, flaps to the flap just to have them there like on the both sides so you know just this additional again it's not going to be airtight it doesn't have to be just you know like helping yourself with you know like just like add stuff that is definitely not going to make it worse if it helps i don't know and uh, yeah so i got some watches in here for i think a couple of months already and let me check here. Yup, I don't see any dust on these. Like, not at all. They're like pristine. So yeah, it works. Okay, we're in the future. And uh, at least from this angle, I can actually see what I'm filming. Which, uh, for this part, I just wanted to show you how it looks in a real life, basically. So, you know. Uh, normal usage without anything done specifically for video purposes. Uh, stuff mostly just stands there. And yeah, we can even zoom out a bit to have it in better context. So as you can see, I usually just have like four watches there. The fifth one I usually keep on the windowsill because it's like solar powered. So, you know, just for it not to go down. I don't really need to, because, you know, you can always charge it with a flashlight. But, uh, yeah, and that's exactly the design. It's designed specifically to fit all the stuff that I have, which are, like, the watch boxes and one more, because this is, like, the empty one for the one I'm currently using. So, you know, when I go to sleep, I just put the watch in the box, have it by my bed side, and, yeah, it's uh, very nice and... Uh, mobile system of keeping wristwatches which don't really stand on their own i mean it's the it's the price we pay for being able to have them on our wrists and yeah as you can see taking stuff out uh pretty simple or rather there is not much fuss in just using it and again this is not a thing to use uh, multiple times a day so yeah i think we're now finally ready to start talking about the watch boxes, which took a lot more work and thinking to get right than the stuff we have talked about up to this point. Okay, let me get to the bench. Okay, and we're finally at the bench. Uh, I have a suspicion that uh, exposure here will be all over the place. So apologies in advance, uh, yeah. I'm new to this whole videography thing. In any case, we have watch carriers, boxes, trays. 
I mean seriously, how would you call them? A stand? Well, I will continue calling them boxes. I mean, if you have a problem with that, just imagine an open box. Should be fine. So, yeah, the first uh, thing to um, address is the fact that we have two versions and uh, they differ only in one dimension. One is a taller one and one is a shorter one. You know, because basically what from what I've experienced is that you have two sizes of, like, two categories of sizes of watches, the larger ones and the smaller ones. And, yeah, you know, given my extremely huge uh, sample of uh, five watches, you know, just having two kinds, well, two versions is uh, completely enough. So, yeah, as for the construction, uh, this is done in layers. Uh, it's relatively easy way uh, to do it then. So, the bottom plate is PVC, obviously, my favorite material, uh, four millimeters uh, thick. And then the rest is made out of natural rubber mat. Uh, in Polish it's called caoutchouc, and I would assume French could also call it that way. Um, it, this is sold as an automotive material for, uh, you know, like soundproofing, and I think also like uh, thermal proofing, don't quote me on the thermal stuff, definitely for sound. It's a really nice material, not sure if it's cheap, it's also not extremely expensive. And uh, yeah, so after the PVC bag, like the bottom plate, like the base plate, uh, we have one layer, it's like four millimeters thick, so it's the same. And this is like the, you know, just the bottom to be nice. And then the actual holding element is three layers they are exactly the same again you know i have to do all of it so if i make my job easier by designing stuff to be the same i save time later and uh, i think one interesting part of of this like what i can show you here it's how much my own ability to cut this foam nicely and how to actually glue it uh, together progressed in time because if you see here it's all over the place you know like the glue spewing out, uh, you know, like, really nearly. Um, don't think about this because, you know, as you put a watch, it's going to imprint on that, so this side is, like, less indicative of the quality of craftsmanship, you know, like, the outside is. So if you look at this one all over the place, and I believe this was either the first or the second one that I've done, and now let's look at the latest one which i done this year, as hopefully you can see. This one is pretty good quality all the way. You know, sharp edges. I don't even think there is like any glue spewing out of it. And yeah, this one doesn't have the foil because this was done from garbage and off cut as usual. Well, not as usual. These ones still have the original backing foil. So this was from like a new piece. And uh, yeah, I've mentioned that these are obviously glued, I mean, there's no mechanical fastener, and I think that's a reasonably good way to do it. Uh, if I remember correctly, like in the beginning, I was using like this, like, uh, UHU, like a universal, I think in Greek it's like pantacolitis, you know, like glues everything kind of a thing. And that was pretty decent. I might have moved to like the 3M... Uh, gel based glue. I think either this one or that one in any case mm, Yeah gluing so it's glued and uh, Am I forgetting anything? Maybe the fact that you know like they are not exactly the same size I mean you see it's like a couple of millimeters here or there which again I mean from my purposes. I'm not trying to sell these uh, so, you know, whatever offcuts, I think it's because, yeah, because I had an offcut, so, you know, good enough. And, uh, and yeah, so physically that's it, like, it's simple, it requires some work, uh, you know, like, I've made a template, which I still have somewhere for um, this shape, you know, just to be able to cut it out nicely and have all of them exactly the same. Now, I think as we have those things, uh, let's get to the lab notebook so yeah and uh, now the exposure goes wherever it wants to go yeah but you see i have actually uh, made notes like 
actual notes and I can even tell you what's the date it's like uh, October 2022 and yeah you know like the basic idea of the dimensions yeah and I even have like uh, additional notes when I was doing more of them so this is the stuff that I'm not the kind of guy who always starts with like drawings uh, CAD files or whatever so probably half of the notes here is done like post factum and I still find it extremely useful and I encourage everyone to do documentation. I mean, even if you don't like it, even if you don't think you're gonna need it or use it, I mean, do it. I mean, you know, like simple stuff. The most important bits, like what are the sizes, you know. If you have something like the metal shelves that I've mentioned, well, you've seen them in the previous segments, you know, what is the what are the screw size? I mean, if you want to make more, you know, this kind of things that you will forget very quickly. So, yeah, and again, I mean, this one's like this one was done much later, like oh, like over a year later, and as you can see, they all fit nicely. So yeah, and uh, on that note, if you have ideas how to call this kind of stuff that I'm making, like in the previous video, or I can even like show you like the stand for the radio. Because it's really difficult to tell people like, what do you do? And I'm like, um, mini furniture, like micro furniture, but uh, you know, it's not for dolls, like a dollhouse or anything like that. It's not model stuff. It's stuff meant to be used. As you can see, you can throw them and nothing is gonna fall out. So, yeah, if you have any suggestions or ideas on um, how to name this stuff, please leave them in the comments. And uh, hopefully this uh, three-in-one thing was interesting and as usual, do stuff and share stuff, uh, the inspiration must flow. Thank you for watching, bye!